There's something about a girl with a gun that audiences just can't get enough of. I know I can't. La Femme Nikita began life as a French film. It was violent and sexy. It survived a Hollywood remake called Point of No Return, starring Bridget Fonda. Now it's a slickly produced TV hit series starring Australian actress Peter Wilson. Now she was an unknown 26-year-old bombshell when she got the gig, and she is remarkably candid about show business. But first, let's look at all the Nikitas, starting with the French one. cameras I'm not having in my apartment anymore. You're not? No. And if you don't like it, you can... We can what? Cancel me, because I'd rather be dead than watch like an animal in the zoo. Are you sure about that? I'm very sure. I, I watched a couple of your shows today, and they're not bad. Huh. But I have to ask you, why is a good actor like you pissing away time ah! on this kind of TV? <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, an honest question. Um, why am I doing that? Because this was my break. This was my opportunity. This is, I, I, I'm repeating my manager's words to me right now. <laughs> uh, no, look, I asked myself that question about the third or fourth episode in when I went, this is not the truth. I like to tell the truth. Right. I want it to be the truth. Yeah, I no like rehearsal. Fits. I like it real. If you're playing someone else's life, it should be the right way. It should be honest. <laughs> That's now right. there's cheating. That's right. And in film it is cheating. Sure. But there's there's more time given in different mediums. Uh, so the answer I, I, is. Listen, the answer is, I, I'm an unknown actress. This was an opportunity to have more of an. You know, I was missing out on big roles in in so-so films, but big movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to stars who were already names, the Cameron Diaz's of the world, or the right. all of the, those mm -hmm. kinds of girls who had a name. And I would get so far on my ability between me and that actor, but I wouldn't sure. get it because of the name. So this happened a lot. And I went to my manager, well, I'm going to New York. I'd rather go and do theater and where I love and come that way. And so right. I would just try television. I'm like, TV, right. that's not big enough for me. That little thing, I'm moving around, they sure. all look with their heads. And he said, it'll be good for you. You'll get your teeth wet. You'll learn technical things. All right, I'll just audition. I started with a couple of auditions. First day I'm out, I auditioned for three things, a sitcom, a Western, a CBS, and this. And I get them all. I have to choose. Good stuff. And this wasn't on top of my list. Right. Oops. This wasn't on the top. I went for the sitcom because it was much less work and a little bit of television. <laughs> and then I had an, an altercation with the lead actor who came on to me. And I went, I don't think so. And then I uh, tried the Western, <laughs> which I loved. And I was much younger than what they were going to cast it as. But because right. of my experience in Tennessee Williams pieces, right. I had the link. I knew it. I knew how to come in and out of it. And I loved it. So they couldn't deny it. Well, she's much younger, but she is a doll at the saloon hall. <laughs> and uh, that's a great fun, Western, you know. And that didn't happen. They went with the stark, Linda Kowalski. And La Femme Nikita, they were constantly ringing. But I was very frightened of this role when I came in. I loved the movie. I just thought, it's been done. How could I possibly do better than what's already been done? It's a TV show. They're going to exploit it now. And then they kind of talked me into it. And, and my manager, and I thought, well, it's an opportunity. There's, 25,000 ingenues there that would love the opportunity. If I take this now, then hopefully I can be doing the things that I want to be doing. I don't mean to set off any alarmist bells, but a friend of mine, <clears throat> I was walking along the street uh, last year, and I, I came by the film set 12 o'clock at night, guy sitting in a chair. I know I'm an actor in the show. I said, hi, how are you? He said, still grinding it out. And I think this was a very successful Canadian uh, cop drama that went on for a long time. I think his acting got worse and worse and worse because I think he began to cultivate certain muscles to conserve energy because of these really, really long days he was doing. I think it did his acting some harm. Is this doing your acting any harm? I think um, if I wasn't to identify with the bad habits that one has to use because they're the only things that the people that make the show like and understand, then I'd be in trouble. 
but I know when I'm doing it. Give me an example of a bad habit that is cultivated in an actor. Like if I was talking to you, Dave, and I said, Dave, why is it, why do, why do, why do people lie? Why do they have to lie? Television. It's, Dave, why do they have to lie? <laughs> You knew about this plan all the time, didn't you? This is all one big manipulation to keep me from going with him, wasn't it? To keep you alive. The Nikita that I see in this role, I can't do on television because I've got to be careful of the audience and oh hi. These are all these rules that I've learned since I took the job and was signed the contract and had to stay. Well, and I that's, think that's interesting. You know, what don't you do that you would do? I think the character should have much more edge. But my edge and the edge that I possess and the edge that I can go to is a little alarming to executives and so forth. And to people, look at this show, look what it is it's on television. It's already hard. So for them, for me to play it as I think Nikita should really be, because everyone who plays Nikita is going to play it differently. I just kept digging. I kept digging. I looked at like a film, like a theater piece. I kept digging for six months. I found some stuff. And so I had no matter. I was no matter what. You could tell me the most worst dialogue. It didn't matter because the character was so alive that there was so much subtext it didn't really matter. Freaked them out. So I had to pull back. That's fine. I need those lessons. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Tell me you had to pull back. You came on the set with all this stuff, and you listen, did what? When you first, when Nikita was first found, I made her like a feral animal, like you've never seen, like a woman, like, a, like an animal. She's an animal. Right. And in this modern world, there are people on the street like that. And she's not crazy. She's just, a, she's just not used to this stuff. So I had Nikita. She was almost, in their mind, the, the note was, look, 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 look demonic i'm like don't you get it that's who she is and to believe it once you spin her over to this fabulous jean what's her name grace kelly spy <laughs> you know grace <laughs> kelly come eliza doodle come whoever else you wanted james dean it'll be great but they they didn't they couldn't go there and uh, that was fine i mean maybe also too much i had so much going on all the time that maybe too much for them and to why edit. was that fine like why so you just ate it I just ate it because the truth is, uh, one, in television, how to survive and not be like your friend is to please, you've got to protect your spirit and constantly have teachers calling me and friends and directors that I work with reminding me, just hold on to it, don't worry, you, it isn't, you could do the best you can and that's what I'm doing and it's not, this is an ex executive producer's medium, television, and uh, I don't want that responsibility, I don't want a career in television, I want a career, I want my life control my career, not my career, to control my life. And in television, that's what it is. Your career generally controls your life.